Hey Revolutionaries, I'm excited to bring you this week's episode with Liza Grossman, where we're talking about her latest reinvention, Kaboom Collective, the education you need to make it. That's right, the education you need to make it. She's actually trademarked that phrase. I love that idea. You know, Liza has been a driving force in the arts and entertainment world uh, over the last 20 years. Notably, she's the founder of the Contemporary Youth Orchestra. And now with her latest reinvention, she's founded Kaboom Collective, where she's taking it up a notch and now taking advantage of the way that we can all communicate and collaborate together today on delivering creative work. It's a holistic approach to arts and entertainment production. So whatever it takes, you know, from creating a work, from doing the writing, uh, doing the conceptualizing, doing the recording, the production, the performance, uh, you know, all the aspects, the stage management part, the, you know, the marketing part, the graphics, everything that would be involved. And what's so interesting now is that, you know, the way our world is spinning is that everyone needs a, a real heavy dose, in my opinion now, no matter what business you're running, of this uh, arts and entertainment aspect. You know, whether it's content creation, where you're, you know, blogging or writing, uh, you're producing audio, video, you're doing a podcast now, um, whatever it might be, the you know, now it's sort of the, the arts are being pushed to the forward in terms of uh, figuring out what to do with all this technology technology that's been created now. So I think it's a very timely thing that she's doing. Uh, and again, taking advantage of all the way we can communicate by by developing this collective and really, really pulling together top-notch pros and highly motivated students with her innovative approach of focusing on production. But real quick, before we get to the episode, I just wanted to mention, yes, I know people keep asking. There, there are pictures coming. I'm going to put them on the Facebook page uh, of the new house, the new my new uh, creative space here in the basement where I'm going to be turning into the, you know, more of a podcasting environment and, you know, music environment for myself. I just, you know, I've just been busy trying to get through stuff. Had some health uh, issues lately that I had to get some testing for so that was kind of a big distraction but i'm through all that stuff everything's looking good which is cool <laughs> it's really weirding me out for a while but um anyways getting past that and i will putting be i will be putting stuff up there so you know you can go to facebook.com forward slash jim jim's reinvention revolution podcast to find that stuff and also um if you're a new listener out there remember go to the website jim jim's reinvention revolution.com and sign up for the priming guide download the priming guide uh, seven uh, simple ways to prime yourself for reinvention. And of course, if you're enjoying the podcast, hey, send an episode to someone. You know, send them the episode you think they need to hear. And they will love you for it. And of course, I will love you for it. And speaking of love, let's get to Liza's episode because you are going to love this. This episode of Jim Jim's Reinvention Revolution is brought to you by MGS Graphics a graphics production support firm delivering services to ad agencies, graphic designers, brand managers, retailers, and product manufacturers worldwide. MGS Graphics is not only reinventing, they are revolutionizing graphics production support. So how do they do it? Well, they free up your team to focus on big ideas while MGS Graphics handles the execution. Their skilled experts are ready to jump in when your project load spikes so you can avoid the headaches and extra overhead cost of hiring new staff. Plus, you won't lose out on work opportunities because of delivery and production timelines. Did you know their skilled staff of professionals use the best and most widely used graphics software on the market? And when it comes to project management, MGS Graphics provides the highest level of customer service by assigning you a dedicated project manager. And they use the industry-leading project management software to ensure all communication, deadlines, and deliverables are met. This allows teams and clients to collaborate with each other in real time, no matter where you are around the world. Need more than just production? MGS Graphics also has a fully staffed creative team. Ask about their design services and agency partnerships. So, if you're looking for a partner to accelerate and support your business's growth, Go to mgsgraphicspro.com forward slash JJRR for 15% off your first project. 15%? That is revolutionary. Go to mgsgraphicspro.com forward slash JJRR. That's mgsgraphicspro.com. 
com forward slash JJRR. Welcome to Jim Jim's Reinvention Revolution podcast, the show that explores reinvention in the digital age as it relates to career, creativity, and technology. Stay tuned for interviews with professionals, entrepreneurs, and creatives that have reimagined success and are making a pivot. If you'd like to listen to the entire back catalog, visit JimJimsReinventionRevolution.com for instant access. And now, here's your host, Jim Jim. Hey, hey everybody. Hey, this is Jim Jim, and welcome to episode 82 of Jim Jim's Reinvention Revolution podcast. And I'm talking today with Liza Grossman, and we're talking Kaboom Collective. So Liza, welcome to the Reinvention Revolution. Oh, thank you. Happy to be here. Uh, well, awesome. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm, I'm, I've been looking forward to this since we first talked. Gosh, it's been a few weeks ago because I was I was moving and you were trying to reset up, uh, set up a new studio over there or get some more uh, sound stuff embedded in there. So how's that going? Tell me about it. That's right. Oh, well, uh, the studio is set up. I had to set up um, my new home studio um, for, you know, uh, for Kaboom Collective, and uh, it's been incredible of changing, like changing the room out completely and setting the vibe so that it works with like what you are doing now. And I had the opportunity to do that. You know, this uh, this was the great pause I think for all of us. And uh, redesigning this this room to match what I wanted to do was, uh, you know, the beginning. Right, right. Well, I think you you really said a lot in a nutshell there that. You know, we all are trying to reconfigure our lives now because of this pandemic and the world's changed so much. And that, um, you know, and thinking about what you're doing with Kaboom Collective, like I think, uh, especially for young people coming out of school, really for anybody now, because we're all pivoting and trying to figure out what to do. But <laughs> but for the for the young people that are coming out of high school and, you know, high school to college, this transition where I know one of the big qu- questions that is always on their mind was on my mind was, what do we need to make it? Like, how do we make it in this world? And now that the world is changing so much, so quickly, uh, you know, what do we do? That's right. Well, you lean into your art. <laughs> you- <laughs> okay, I love it. <laughs> I mean, think, think about think about during during this time over the last, you know, 13 months, what has really kept so many people going is, is access to the arts. Right, right. Well, definitely reminds us that we're human, right? Oh, for sure. Well, you know, I, I, I wanted to use, I wanted to use that phrase in particular because I was looking at your website for Kaboom, and I noticed that on the front page of Kaboom Collective, it says, um, "Oh shoot, where is it? Now my computer's not. I want to get the phrasing right." You probably know this off the top of your head, but it okay. says the education you need to the, make it. That's it. The education you need to make it. And <laughs> right by the end of the phrase, there's a little TM trademark. So I wanted, to, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you about this. I'm like, oh my god, she tra- trademarked that phrase. The education you need to make it. I-, I love this idea, and I'm super excited about it because it's this very interesting integrated approach to education and you know, real app, real world applications that there's very little of in the world. And that was one of the reasons that attracted me to, to getting in touch with you. So can you explain for people, and, and now it's more relevant than ever because of social media content creation. It's, you know, now is the time where it's like revenge of the, of the creators are, is coming uh, and it helps us get back in touch with our humanity. So tell us, give us an overview of what Kaboom Collective is, first of all, and then we'll drill, drill down into some of the details of it. Cool. So the the idea of it is to provide an opportunity for our for our students to network with, learn from, work with, and create um, uh, uh, marketable product with industry leaders from around the country. Right. So, well, what's the? Can you like? talk about the structure of like is it a accredited school is it a program is it a what is it exactly so uh kaboom has is sort of the umbrella name for several different things that that happen within the organization mm-hmm. so what we're doing is um we are again working with industry leaders 
who obviously specialize in whatever their field is. And they're working with our students um, on how to create whatever their specialty is, that type of product. And so, for example, regularly we have um, a composition team and a studio orchestra. For every production that we do, the studio orchestra, the composition team works with a composer who's a specialty in their field. Mm -hmm. And they write the music for the production. And then the studio orchestra records the music for that production. And these are all productions that begin with Kaboom approaching an artist and talking with them about doing a potential project or partnering with someone. Um, you know, it's because everything that we do is based on collaboration. And um, then from there, these students will have created these uh, pre-professional relationships and they'll have products like get liner note and IMDB credit right. for what they're doing, which is going to line their portfolios, helping them uh, before they even hit the job market, giving them these kinds of experiences to create again product. Right. Right. Well, I, again, I like this, this idea and the focus of it where it's focused on product. It's focused on producing something where I think that's the, right. Yeah. I think the you know, in the, obviously in the education system, you know, 99% of it is really focused on just learning. You know, you're trying to grab all this information, trying to figure it out, develop some skills. So it's like developing skills, learning, but it's, 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 you know, not focused on application and that's something that gets lost yeah, a little bit. Right. Yeah, and that's what this is, because they are going to be building real world productions and they'll have a great time doing it because each production is going to belong to them. But also like it's this method of artistic discovery as well, because honestly, whatever direction you go into, um, creativity should be a part of your existence. You know, um, so it doesn't have to necessarily be in the arts and entertainment industry. But if you are curious about it, um, we are here to um, show all the creative possibilities that in, that exist in the artistic universe and how to help them discover what it is that they may want to do. Because I know that when I was in high school um, and I went to an art school, I didn't know that all of these other things existed for me as an instrumentalist. I didn't know that I could do something other than play in an orchestra or, or teach in, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a, in a classroom. I didn't know that you could also like be a promoter or you could be a producer or um, a manager or a composer or a recording artist for a video game or a media and marketing specialist. I mean, there's just, there's so many arms to the industry that make the production happen. Right. And so my goal as an educator is to make sure that my students just not, not that they just know about what all the different possibilities are, but they actually get this immersive experience into working with people who do this to really learn this craft and say, oh, you know what? I do like this. Or, wow, I'm a really good horn player, but I don't know if I really want to play in an orchestra, but I just love the energy of a production. Mm -hmm. Well, here's that opportunity for you to dip your, not just dip your toe, but like really immerse yourself in different aspects of it. Because I think that it's important that you know what's available to you in this industry if you if you want to be a part of something creative like that. And uh, so that's why we're here. We're here to um, make sure that that our students are aware of what they can do. And hopefully through this um, experience that they'll have, they'll uh, graduate with the confidence to create their own careers in whatever direction they choose. Right, right. Well, I, again, I think it's so it's so interesting that you, you know, you're you're coming at this from obviously art and arts and entertainment industry perspective, uh, but what the, what to me is so interesting about it is now this arts and entertainment craft is spanning like all 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 disciplines, <laughs> all 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 businesses, all nonprofit things that people want to do because of the you know the rise of digital basically i think um you know digital marketing is super important but what does that take it takes the product the art production part right yeah it takes it takes all the the integrated parts of you know 
concepting and developing and learning to use the right software tools and learning what all those disciplines are, like an art director and a producer and a, uh, a writer, you know, like blogging is a big deal right now, you know, right? For, for all the industries, let alone just the arts and entertainment right. industry. So that's what's really cool about this is that it's, it's really giving people an applied avenue to, like you said, explore, figure out what all these disciplines are, figure out where they might fit in, even though, you know, you might, f- your channel might be, your initial channel might be through a specific instrument or through acting or whatever it might be, or through writing music or composing music, but then you get to discover, oh, I really like the production part, or I really like just doing the graphic arts part or whatever it might be. So pretty interesting. Well, can you talk about a little bit, like I was looking at your collective, so maybe explain a little bit about um, how you how you found these people to work with, because there's some really interesting, super high-level experienced people that are part of the collective, and they're yeah. scattered all over. So can you talk a little bit more about the logistics of how does this happen if I wanted to sign up or, well, who can sign up first of all? Maybe go through a little bit more detail of that because this is for a certain age group or certain time frame, I guess, in your education. And then how is how do the projects get, get produced, actually? Okay. So, um, all right. So the, the ages who it's for is, um, are for curious musicians or, you know, musicians who already know what they want to do, ages 15 through 25. Mm-hmm. Um and that includes instrumentalists and composers. Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have um, a consistent composition team and a consistent studio orchestra. Um, uh, other other aspects and other disciplines are brought into the uh, productions based on what the production actually is. So for example, uh, we just finished um, working with a video game company uh, who and they're going to be putting out a 3D video game in uh, March of 22, I believe, and it's it's called Brave Snow. Hmm. And so we had a small group of uh, developers who worked with the lead developer of that company to learn how to uh, create a character for this type of game. Um, and then the composition team worked with the lead composer, who was a specialist in video game composition and they learned not just like how to write for a video game but the but the technology behind it as well so the composition team works with the lead composer of uh um who does this for a living like writes video games but they learned not just how to write for video game but all the technology behind it as well and then they sent the studio orchestra the charts and the studio orchestra has now spent the last week in their at-home studios, which they learned how to build from a producer who talked them through all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and they are they're recording their tracks now. Um, our next um, so so you can see that we then brought in that other discipline of being a developer. Um, in the fall, we're starting an animation project where we're working with uh, my connection. Um, is uh, to to this is uh, through my friends Julie Bernstein and Steve Bernstein, and they are uh, lead composers at Warner Brothers. And Julie and Steve and I worked together on on a show called Tunes for Tunes back in two thousand seven, and so have um, maintained a relationship since then. And uh, I I approached them about you know doing um, a, a cartoon recording, oh, and you know, through this collaboration and through what has turned into this online think tank, which is sort of like where I'm going to take you with the idea of what the collective is, is this think tank of like people. Julie said to me, well, why don't we just create an animation from the ground up? And then what that did besides like kaboom was (laughs) um, it, (laughs) it opened up this other realm. So now we're going to we're going to open up for applications for people who want to be a scriptwriter or have a storyboard, and you know that s- small student teacher ratio, which is very important to us, right. um, will then work with a lead scriptwriter who will work with them in creating and molding and and you know and and smoothing out the script that they've written. 
or working with them on creating a new one, then we'll also have uh, uh, students who are interested in being voiceover actors who will then read the script in, in the characters of the voices. And then we'll have a team of young animators who are interested in working with you know, an animator in the industry who will then animate the cartoon. Then it'll go to Julie and Steve Bernstein who will then work with the composition team on creating the music and then to me, um, and I will work with the studio orchestra. And then all of these students from all over the place working with all of these different professionals will then have been the creators of this product. Right. Um, and so that's, so opening up the disciplines, as you said. So it's, it's really incredibly multifaceted what we're able to do by really paying attention to all of the different things that go into making a piece of art happen. Right, right. Well, I think it's, I think it's, ah, it's so interesting that, that now we have, um, because of you know the age that we're living in, we because we have access to the internet, because we have the all the streaming software and technologies. Now we can really take advantage of really unlock a lot of value for everyone, right? Because we can go to mm-hmm. subject matter experts. We can find the motivated students that are really interested, um, that are really going to get a lot out of the experience. And I think maybe you just answered my question. I was going to ask you, like, is this? Uh, is the collective experience, is it completely online? Is it national? Is it worldwide? Where are you drawing people from? Obviously the collective is national, right? In the yes. US, and the and US. some of our students are as well. We have, um, we're inherently digital. Um, we will have in-person sessions. There's no question. Uh, but we will always offer opportunities for students around the country to connect with and learn from industry experts. So it doesn't happen just in the productions. So uh, in addition to working on these productions, we also offer what we, what we call our industry classes. And that's also where members of the collective um, share their expertise. So you had asked me earlier, like what um, to, to tell you, like what the idea of, of the collective Mm-hmm. Is, mm-hmm. is that correct? Okay. So the collective is a group that will continue to have ebb and flow, you know, as people come in um, throughout our existence. And the collective is Phil, it's, it's the online think tank and everyone is the educator and everyone is the, is, is a contributor and everyone is an artist. So it's not like, you know, being the music director of an orchestra where you say, well, this is, you know, this is what we're going to be playing. Instead, mm-hmm. um, I'm the artistic director because I, I'm, someone has to oversee it, but anyone on the collective could come and say, I really think this production would be great. And we talk about it and see how we can make it happen. So it's really a, a collective of artists working to bring opportunity to our you know, for our students. I see. And, yeah. um, and so they, the members of the collective can either be people who um, are currently or will be or have been partners in a um, product or a production that we, that we, uh, that we do. Mm-hmm. They can, and, or they can be people who are teaching these industry classes. And the industry classes are offered once a week, and it's a, it's a six week course. And you know we're just finishing up our first six, six week course now, um, but uh, uh, they can t- so there's three classes that they can sign up for at a time, and these will also um, revolve and evolve and o- over time as well. So right now there's um, acoustics of music and physics of sound, which is taught by a professor at Case. Uh, Dr. David Kasdan, um, and there's um, Scoring the Video Game World, which is being taught by uh, Dr. Kate Rogers, who's out in Los Angeles, and Dr. Daniel Goldmark, who's here at, at uh, Case. Um, and then the third class for our, for our first uh, chunk is Do You Hear What I Hear? Oh. And it's really become, yeah, it's a fascinating <laughs> class. It's, become, it's like Producer 101. And oh, that's interesting. Really, okay. Yeah, and really learning how to 
be the best listener for yourself, like how to critically listening, listen for yourself, you know, for mm -hmm. to yourself. Right. And then also like learning how to listen to others and how to deliver criticism in a respectful and uh, manner to mm -hmm. your colleagues. Sure. You know, so that it becomes across as being extremely um, well from where it is, which is being collaborative and, right, and right. For, the, for the art. Um, but yeah, the class, all three of those class, and that's taught by, uh, sorry, um, a man named Thomas Moore, who's a producer at 5-4 Productions, um, and uh, also an incredible oboist. After this, after this first chunk of classes, um, the next, the next classes include yoga and arts advocacy and uh, music, some music history and, um, how to how to do an interview and how to be and how to be a writer and how to advocate for yourself. Oh, I like this. Okay. So it's it's it sounds like as you as you continue on your you're just you're gonna continue to flesh flesh this thing out, right? And and all the aspects that you see through your own experience. This is I think the interesting part, since you've been a professional in the industry for many years at very high levels you know, you're looking back on your experience and thinking like, what would I have needed? What do I, th what do I think is needed right now today? And you're going to keep kind of having that input into the, into the curriculum, right? That's a nice way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. I that's mean, that, right. that's what I see coming from you. That's, that's what's, yeah, that's what's like so interesting. What's, what's needed right now. Well, Liza, what's needed right now is I need to, I need to know more about you. And I want I want the listeners to <laughs> I want the listeners to learn more about you because uh, we could we could be talking about all the the nuances of Kaboom Collective forever and I and I want to but it's it's so interesting I want people to understand the 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 threads of uh, innovation and entrepreneurship that have woven themselves into you in such an integrated way uh, over the years um, and that's another thing that just is interesting to me that. Again, I think as we move forward, certainly in arts and entertainment, but in the world as it's spinning now, um, those things are are just becoming more and more valuable for people and to, and for us to think this way, to think in this more integrated way as we as we move forward. And I'm curious, with respect to you, is how did this happen for you, and how did these things get nurtured? So I read a little bit about your story of you know you were young and, and went to some orchestra. You can explain that for everyone, but how did this get started for you in terms of how you look at the world and why you were able to be, why you're able to be um, innovative? Oh. Or do you think, or do you think of yourself in that way? I think of this in that way. You may, you, maybe I, you don't understand your <laughs> yourself in that way, but I'm looking at this as like, Hey, this is you you have a certain vision about you and maybe you've thought, well, I'm just an artist. That, that's not a good way to say that, just an artist. But in terms of just, I'm an artist and that's what artists do, but I, I, I think you might be underselling yourself in the way you think about it, is that there's some real vision and innovation in, in your approach here. Thank you. Um, I'm honestly, I, you, you've stunned me a bit. My, I think of myself as a teacher first, mm -hmm. and... Um, I, I, w I, I was so confused when I, well, I knew that I wanted to go into the arts and I was just, I was so confused about what direction to go in. And, um, it just, it just sort of happened because somebody said something to me about the kind of music that they thought that I was good at. And it made me think differently. And. I just, I really just wanted to do all of the cool things that you can do as a, as a musician. Like that's where, that's where the impetus started is like, mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know that you could do all these cool things. So let me introduce these things to my students and let's dig in as deep as we can and have these, like what I was hoping were exceptional experiences for them. And, you know, you always, you always wish for, greater success for your students than you have for yourself. And so trying to set them up right. to have those choices and that experience um, is really where um, I believe my passion for the arts comes from, is 
I mean, there's really nothing like seeing that moment in their face when they get it, you know, or when, <laughs> right, you, right. you know, and when they, and when they, when they feel it and they go, Oh, I now, I now understand whatever it is that they're understanding. Right. Right. You well, know, it could be a lyric. It could be like the ebb and flow of, of playing with your section. It could be the way that, that the orchestra moved. It could be a reaction from the audience. It could, it, anything, you know, an emotion that it stirs up, whatever it is, seeing that moment of, I get it for them. Right. That, that that's that's the thing that keeps pushing me in my lower back to keep moving forward. <laughs> Your lower back. I love that. Yeah. Uh, well, well, well. Okay. So tell me about some of those moments for yourself, though, because I, I was so interested. I was looking at. Uh, I can't find the exact bio now, but uh, some of your performance credits and and the production stuff that you've done, and it it, it mentioned that you, um, you know, recorded or toured or played with Bernadette Peters. I did. Uh, and um, what were the other ones on there? I mean, just like really disparate. Uh, yes. I think it was the, the three band. tenors. Yes. The Kansas. three tenors, the, yeah. the band. Yes. Like how did these performances or how did you can get connected to this, to the industry at this level? Um, can you could just share some experiences with, with people? Well, as far, I mean, I'm, I'm a, uh, a violist. Um, I play the violin also. Sometimes I call myself a recovering violinist because I found the viola. Um, for those of you out there who understand the viola, you'll you'll appreciate that. Right. They're chuck- <laughs> they're, they're they're chuckling right now. They're like, oh. <laughs> she knows. She knows. Okay. <laughs> um, no, as as a musician, I I and as an as as a player, um, and this is when I was still in college. I contacted the. No, I was just—I had just graduated from with my undergrad. I—I I contacted the—I found out who the lead contractor was in Cleveland and called her. Actually, I'm—I'm I'm still uh, friendly with her, and I called her and told her that I was a violist in town that I wanted to play, and she took my name down. And then I got a call from her, maybe about. Hmm, six months later and she told me that they were hiring a string section for kansas and i had planned kansas the rock to band. To yeah kansas the rock band okay, and this the, is the in, okay. <laughs> in one of the theaters in i mean i mean just just listen to um uh uh kansas and and you know you can hear the violin part oh in, first, yeah it's very wait, dramatic majestic kind of <laughs> rock music yeah <laughs> But wait, let's pause for a second. What's the Kansas tune that? Um, I don't. I don't know. Carry on, Meg, wake me, love, whatever. Hold on, because your it's your your readers are, are your yeah. listeners are going to be a little pissed if I don't right. come up with that. <laughs> right. And I cannot believe. Oh, dust in the wind. What is wrong with me? Yeah, dust in the wind. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's. Okay. Do you want to rewind now? No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So I mean, uh, so she, so she called. So Terry ended up calling me, and about six months later, and um, offering me a, a gig with Kansas, the rock band. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was being held in downtown Cleveland at Playhouse Square. And so if you can, you know, just imagine Dust in the Wind, you know, with a live string section with the band in an intimate setting, it was pretty great. And I was supposed to go to Chicago to see one of my high school friends and um, canceled my plans because this was like my first like union gig and it was with Kansas and Dust in the Wind. Um, So, so I, you know, just moved my plans and took the gig and then these once you once you play and if you and if you do well and you show up and and you lock and you have your part locked down yeah. and you're collaborative and you're listening and you're focused on 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 your job you're going to you know they'll remember that right you know show up show up and play um <clears throat> so that and what um, was that- your what was your experience when you like this first job that you had how did you feel when you had that experience Afterwards? with Kansas, like on a big stage with an orchestra around you? I assume. Oh, I mean, the, the the fire that was lit was was you know undeniable. I mean, I knew 
I knew um, prior to that that I that that I was a sucker for productions because <laughs> I like going to shows and right. I even if I can get backstage to whatever show it is I just and it's not even about the artist at you know at times it's yes. sometimes it's just because I the energy is is insane mm -hmm. um, so yeah but but to have had that that experience in a professional manner yeah oh yeah it was that was talk about uh, um, it's pretty great. Yeah, I mean, but 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 really talk about like locking it down for yourself. Like, oh, there it is, you know. But for <laughs> me, it wasn't even about being the player. It was about being in it. Being in it, yeah. and you know, it was it was experiences like that that helped me realize um, what I wanted to provide for my students. I see. Well, okay. So you said something there that I, it was just uh, on the tip of my tongue. Kind of this next question for you was like you realized you were in it. You wanted to be in the production. And I was thinking, like, how did these performance experiences lead to your um, ability, I guess, or 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 to the opportunity to be to work with sticks as a, as a production manager or a musical director? Because I know you've done that for quite a while. Are you still in that position? Is that I am. Okay, so tell tell people about that experience. Oh well, <laughs> my my connection with sticks happened when I was. Uh, uh, with my youth orchestra, the Contemporary Youth Orchestra, which I founded in 1995, and it was in season 11, and which and which was in 2005, 2006, and I had started this um, series called Rock the Orchestra, and it started uh, with um, working with Ray Manzarek of the Doors, and then we did Symphonic Led Zeppelin, and then. This was our, and then we worked with Graham Nash and then John Anderson and then Pat Benatar. And all of a sudden there was uh, this need for me to contact whoever represented Tommy Shaw. And I called a friend of mine. A need, who okay. is, I'm sorry. A, a need. Just... I, yeah. It's just like, I love his voice so oh, much. And okay. yeah. So when, so like, his everything that he sings just has it it floats on top of whatever he's doing oh, and absolutely so a friend of mine in LA who um is a publicist i called her and asked her if she knew who represented tommy and <clears throat> i was sitting i remember sitting at my dining room table and i typed in you know i looked for his manager and his and his manager's name came up charlie brusco mm -hmm. and i got to it uh right before uh, probably at the same time megan did and his phone number was right there and it was a friday and it was like 4:55 and i got off the phone and called and how may i speak with charlie brusco speaking well <laughs> like that just doesn't happen like you never like right. the manager you don't expect the phone, even, to, even to this day you know, right, right. Um, when you call the office. So uh, I realized that I had, without knowing what the language was, that this was this was where I learned the, what the 30 second elevator speech was, which oh, is right. you got to get in there and knock it out like right now, get their attention. And um, and he said, well, his immediate reaction was, well, that sounds really great. He said, but what about the whole band? Whoa! What, what, were, what, what were you thinking when he said that? Because like, <laughs> you're thinking I could barely even imagine getting Tommy, let alone the whole band. Right? I was like, what the whole <laughs> band? Um, I was like, like JY and Todd Zuckerman and Ricky Phillips and Lawrence Gowan right. and Chuck Panazzo. I mean, it, it was just it it was just it was mind boggling to me. And um, and he so literally. That was now, it was now like 5.03 p.m. on this Friday in 2005. Oh, my goodness. And, right. And we, I, you know, on a Monday, I was on a conference call with Charlie, Tommy, and JY. And wow. they, and our relationship just started off as collaborative immediately, mm -hmm. you know. And then um, the show was, was booked and it happened and... We played um, Blossom Music Center, and there was an electrical storm that night. And everyone out in the who were out on, who was out on the lawns had to come into, you know, into the pavilion. And it was packed and energized. And 
um, it was filmed for it was filmed for TV and and um, uh, recorded for uh, DVD and actually DVD and CD and Blu-ray release. Oh wow! Um, awesome. And one thing that I can share with everyone is that something that's worked really well is if you want to, it's like any friendship. If you want to maintain a relationship with anyone that you really enjoyed, maintain the relationship, mm-hmm. you know, right. and I immediately felt like I was welcomed into their family. And I've learned since then that that's how they work. I see. You know, they, that's how, that's how they consider the people they work with as family. And um, then they started doing orchestra shows and asked me to, to, hang out with them and do it. So it was through. That's really cool. Was that yeah, the first time, was that the first time that they had worked with an orchestra like that? Or I don't know the, the, the detailed think, history of yeah. sticks. Yeah. With a full orchestra. Yes. Oh, interesting. So that, you know, maybe, you know, obviously you struck a chord with them, uh, so to speak, <laughs> um, because maybe they were, you know, looking for this type of opportunity. That's really interesting. That's great. So we've, we've played, we've played, um, in a handful of places for sure, but an epic show all the way around was um, at Red Rocks Amphitheater with uh, with Colorado Symphony. Mm. There was something that was happening on the stage that night with every single member of that band, and everyone was just playing just at their just like dancing on the bars that they had set, and I had just never felt so inspired before yeah. and we, we fed off of each other in this circular motion that was just um you could feel it and you know there was there was a bit of a windstorm that night while that was happening and i i think that it was because of the energy that was turning on that stage it was incredible yeah I it was bet. so hot wow phenomenal and what yeah. is what a setting i mean that's yeah it's like makes the hairs on your arms stand up <laughs> wow yeah yeah really what, cool. one of my one of my most favorite memories <laughs> well, thanks for sharing that because I, I wanted people to understand that, you know, you have this real, real life experience, uh, real high level production experience. And that's what you're really, that's what you really can bring to the party for the students in this, you know, Kaboom Collective. It's all this, um, you know, stuff that builds over the lifetime of, of your of your career. Um, p- part of it, though, is another interesting, you know, part aspect is it is this. Uh, entrepreneurship part that you know somehow you figured out over the years how to set up nonprofits, how to run organizations, how to be a good manager. Was did that always come naturally, or where did you learn that part of it? Where'd you learn that part of it? Because I think these are skills that you know, like where where does this come from? Um, I mean, you know, I'm a Leo and I'm a conductor, so there's that. Oh, so is that, oh, is that what it is? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the orchestra people, I guess. It's another joke for them. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it's this, nothing that I've done has, has been in a box, you know, and, and uh, the founding of Kaboom was, um, uh, I have a partner whose name is Joe Wegraff, and he is really exceptional at hearing what I'm talking about, what I might want to do with a production or educationally or something that I see, even if I'm like talking in color. Um, <laughs> he, he has, he has this, <laughs> this um, ability to be able to surmise that and, and get it into some really clear language. And so the way that, um, and I, and, you know, he and I ran, you know, uh, for the most part, um, with the help of an exceptional board president, ran CYO together for about 10 years. And um, he's, interestingly enough, Joe is also a former student of mine. He was a cellist in the orchestra. Oh, cool. And um, he, and I, when he, when he and I started working together, it was um, nice for him to f- have had the perspective of working with me um, as his, you know, as his educator and then as, as, uh, partners. Right. And, um, so it was, re- it's really nice full circle, but the way that the two of us work together is how I think that things get managed as well as they do. And, um, 
So starting a nonprofit, um, <laughs> if you want to talk about that a little bit, I can tell you that if you have an idea, um, come up with a name and think about how the name reflects what it is that you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then um, decide if you want to be an LLC or a nonprofit, because that that is a big decision to make. Right. Um, and if you decide to become a nonprofit, it's a really easy application online, and you just have to be very clear. You have to you have to register it so that you can have um, what is called an EIN, which is an employee identification number, and <clears throat> then you apply for the non nonprofit status. And uh, doesn't take very long, and then you're established. There you go. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, well that's these. That's the. That's the. Coming so up with a name, I always think is is like the most important. It's like naming a child, like <laughs> right. naming a human. You're, you know, which is so important, you know, because it's it's the first thing that people are going to. Oh, hello, Jim. Right. You know, and. <laughs> The first impression, you know, right? It helps you sell, sell it just right from the get go, whatever it might sure, be. Sure, you right? know, and so you come up with the name, you know, and like so, example like Kaboom Collective. Um, the idea of that name um, came from talking with somebody about what it meant to collaborate, and you know, there's this perceived empty space between us when we're talking about things, mm -hmm. things, but it's like really filled with all these atoms and molecules. And when the ideas, you start throwing ideas back and forth and it gets bigger and more excited, all of a sudden, you know, those atoms and molecules will explode into what the production is. It's like, I want to do something that's deep red filled with tambourines. And Joe may think that a really great shade of yellow is going to go for, with that. And then all of a sudden we see what it's supposed to be. And so kaboom. And then just explosive ideas you know, and opportunities, um, and conversations right, and right. collaborations, um, and productions and experiences. <laughs> um, and then the collective Kaboom collective is, is the recognition that it is a collective of artists. Mm -hmm. Right. And then all of a sudden it was like, we knew what we were and we knew what we wanted to do once we started talking it through and came up with the name. So I do, I do emphasize time on the name and to think about what that is and then lock it down and do it. I like it. I like it. Well, you know, in terms of nonprofit versus profit, I wanted to maybe explore that a little bit for people because I knew, I know the Contemporary Youth Orchestra was also a nonprofit and this yes. new entity is, is a nonprofit. How do you think about funding and, and maybe, you know, especially for this Kaboom Collective, is there student tuition to be paid? Is it funded by uh, donors or how does that work? Sure. So um, when, when you are a nonprofit education base, um, well, yes, there is tuition um, for the students. Okay. And, um, but I will say that, that, uh, you know, we do have um, a scholarship fund and, and no one has been turned away <clears throat> because of financial reasons. Okay. But the, uh, the income comes not from tuition. The income comes from um, people who want to be sponsors of productions, um, individual donors who believe in the mission and want to make a donation. And it comes from uh, uh, local and national foundation support. And those are organizations where uh, that fund, that have uh, an endowment and fund nonprofits that fit their mission and their goals right. um, through an application process. Okay. And how did, how did you understand how to, did you figure that out from the get go in terms of just being in the arts world or did you have to kind of really spend some time and research these organizations and how it's done and how to fill out applications and all that? Oh, well you, you find out locally what, what the local foundations are and what they might be supportive of. You can just search. Ah, that's like a good if you, idea. If start locally. Going, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're going to start a theater nonprofit you, that's that's for children, you might search youth theater foundation support, you know, and just Google that and find the different foundations that, that do that support. And then um, contact, look on the foundation's website, find out what their criteria is for, for their uh, grant awards. And... 
um, see if it fits your mission. And if you believe that it does, then you contact um, whoever the um, lead is in that organization's realm because they may have lots of different grant opportunities and ask them for a meeting. And it could be in person or phone, but ask them for a meeting because they're not going to reach out to you. You got to reach out to them. Right, right. You know, and and sit down and uh, speak with them about why you are so passionate about starting this organization. And and they know why you're there. You know, they know that you need support. And so, you know, you can just ask them at the end of a presentation, is this something that you think your organization would support? Or would you support us submitting a letter of intent? Or would you support us, you know, what's your process? Right, right. You know, and you find out right away. I like it. Well, I like I like your your just straightforward approach. Hey, call them. Call them. Just you know, call them. It's four it's four fifty five in the afternoon on a Friday. Just call them. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, that's how it's done. Really, I mean, it's you know, maybe it's a little basic, but it's a little more involved. But uh, it's it's just great. I love it. <laughs> Our <Heartbeat> musicum. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Liza, thanks thanks for sharing your uh, your passion and your experience. It's it's awesome and your 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 clarity of vision i think that that comes across as well um as as i'm speaking to you where it's like you know you have a passion but you're able to see things again you have this clarity about it and you're like you know what this needs to happen and because you're passionate because you want to share or because you want to give or you want to have that exchange that you know something that inspired you you want to inspire inspire others obviously and this time around it's with these students in the kaboom collective um you know i got one more question for you before we sure. get out of here, and that's you know, since it, since it is the reinvention revolution, uh, I always mm. ask, like to ask people <laughs> um, if they have of a reinvention revelation, something that they learned about um, you know business or themselves along the way or life through their own reinventions, and maybe through this last latest reinvention of Kaboom Collective. What can you share with everybody? Well, during this great pause. Um, uh, there was a meeting of minds, and it was extraordinary. And uh, that came, that meeting of minds was with my friends and colleagues who are in the industry and talking with them about how they were dealing with um, the change in our professions. Mm-hmm. And it gave me that moment of, again, great pause where I realized that there's continued growth and continued involvement in, in everyone Mm, and uh, to let that happen. I like it. Yeah. Not, I think, you know, the older you get, maybe you forget that you need to evolve, that you need to continually evolve. You know, you think I've got this, I figured things out or whatever. Uh, but that's certainly not the case. And just to be reminded that, hey, we're all still, we all still need to evolve on a daily basis. And maybe even more quickly now. It's the way I'm thinking about it because of technology and the way the world's shifting around. Yeah, that's a great way to um, kind of summarize it right there. <laughs> Very good. Well, Liza, uh, if people are interested in applying for Kaboom Collective or just finding more information out about it, or being a donor, I was actually checking out the donor section myself, different levels. So I'm, I'm uh, trying to wrap well, my, my head around that. So I might, you might find a, a contribution here soon <laughs> from, someone you, from someone you, you recently spoke to. So, um, <laughs> That's um, very thoughtful. and I would encourage, I would encourage others out there to, to um, consider it if you think this is, um, you know, for you, but I, you know, I think it is for everyone right now, uh, coincidentally here, but uh, so where would you send them? Where, where should they, how should they get in touch with you or find more out more about the Kaboom? Well, you can check out um, kaboomcollective.org. Okay. Um, or you can contact me at Liza at kaboomcollective.org. Okay. Fair enough. I will have uh, all those, all that information in the show notes uh, and other links I can find out there for you. Um, so make sure you look there. If you're listening, Liza, thank you so much again. Oh, Jim, thank you. And thank you, everyone in the reinvention revolution. Thank you for listening to Jim Jim's reinvention revolution podcast. If you want to hear more, join our mailing list at Jim Jim's reinvention revolution.com. 
See you next time. And remember, the revolution has just begun. So dig in, embrace the process of reinvention, and start realizing the success you've always dreamed of. Hey, revolutionaries, if you enjoyed today's episode and today's guest, let them know by commenting on their Facebook page, finding their Twitter handle or Instagram feed, and letting them know you heard them on Jim Jim's Reinvention Revolution podcast, and tell them what you got out of the episode, what you really liked, or how they inspired you. I know they would get a kick out of it, and will help others find the same value that you found.